Hey everyone, Eben here. So I recently received a question about using flow in my artwork. So today I thought I'd create a short video on the subject of flow and talk a little bit about different compositional strategies you can use to increase the viewer's engagement in your piece and draw the eye to very specific areas of focus in your painting to increase the quality of your composition overall. So let's just dive right into Photoshop and I can talk a little bit about what I mean here. Okay, so let's just jump right in here and talk a little bit about what I mean by flow. So flow is basically what governs the eye's movement around your painting. And this is really important. I see a lot of beginner artists uh, sort of go into a lot of detailed rendering and some nice lighting and uh, other uh, interesting compositional variations, but they don't really think about how every single line, every single shape is influencing the flow of their painting. So if we start out with, with something uh, like, you know, just the rule of thirds as a template here, basically the first thing we'll want to do is decide where our focal point or focal points are going to be. So uh, generally, you know, my basic setup will be have one kind of over there and maybe have a secondary focal point here. Um, you can have really an infinite number of focal points, but it does get increasingly complex. So uh, let's say we have three, maybe we could have one there and then a second one here and then maybe a third one down here. And basically you just want to set these up so that they're not sort of weighted equally. You want the first focal point to be your primary area of focus. You want it to have to be sort of the um, the, the essence of your painting, the thing that everywhere else is leading. And then from there on, you can have sort of secondary and tertiary focal points that are attractive in their own right, but aren't stealing too much attention and in fact are funneling attention back to this primary area. And this helps to keep some, some balance and variety in your painting. And having equally valued, equally weighted focal points around your piece will confuse the viewer the viewer a little bit and uh, sort of create some tension between them. So let's say this is a, a landscape or something. And, uh, you know, down here we have maybe uh, a character. And then over here, maybe we have a uh, an interesting uh, building of some kind. or uh, a cool rock or just some light. That's a very simple one, but it's an attractive focal point anyway. And then uh, over here we have our citadel or our monster or something. So basically we want to think about how we can get people to each of these focal areas and away from the edges of the canvas. And that's the other key here. We don't want there to be anything interesting going on in these areas as a general rule. And generally not direct in the center unless you are establishing a symmetrical composition, uh, which you can do, but you have to be pretty deliberate about it. So now the next thing we're gonna wanna do, let's pick a different color here, is think about when we're designing this landscape, how we can use the lines of the, uh, the landscape and the shapes we put down to guide attention away from the edges of the canvas and to these different focal areas. So uh, right off the bat, let's just create an arrow going straight here and maybe have another one going from here and maybe another one coming from this side. And uh, so that's those are some solid uh, lines to draw us towards this area. Now let's think about maybe having some kind of road or pathway or even just um, a, uh, a direct line along the landscape bringing us to our second focal point and then something else maybe bringing it from there over here. Everything else that we put in this image, we want to be supporting this, this uh, 
these transitions. So any line we put up here, we want to have directing towards this citadel. We don't want to have anything kind of like cutting across like this, uh, or maybe sort of just intercepting these lines and leading the, the viewer's attention back here and sort of cutting off our flow to our primary focal point. We want everything to funnel into these key areas. And then once they do, uh, we want to establish a relationship between them so that the, um, the viewer can sort of be locked into this cycle between different areas of, of focus. So these relationships can be created through literal lines or uh, shapes in your painting. They can be created through uh, implied relationships, such as a character looking at a distant object or a pathway uh, going through your landscape or even something as simple as a sword or a tree branch that's just sort of, you know, casually pointing uh, in a particular direction. You can use these relationships to create this cycle between your various focal points. So let's just illustrate that pretty quickly. And right now I know it's hard to perceive this as a landscape, but we'll kind of get into that uh, section next. Right now, what's important is that we have these arrows, these lines, these paths for the viewer's eye to follow that are leading to these various focal points. And from there, we can develop some kind of cycle between them. And we want to make sure there's nothing interesting leading out in any way from this cycle. And ideally, we want to have most of our focus leading to this area. Now, the next question is, okay, so you have these pathways, but what is going to control the direction of flow? For example, if I'm a viewer and I found this focal point, what's to stop me from going back in this direction to the edges of the canvas and away from the painting? That's where uh, things like contrast, like saturation, shape, texture, all these different things you can use in your piece to draw the eye to certain areas along these pathways. If I make my primary focal point a really high contrast, high saturation area, the tendency of the eye is not going to be in this direction. It's going to use these pathways from the edge of the canvas to get to this focal area. Okay, so next let's, let's just take all of this merge it down, let's knock down that opacity a little bit, and let's think about how this actually applies to creating a sketch or mapping out your composition. So let's bring out our pencil here, and let's start sketching this out. So I'm just, I'm going to very uh, literally follow the arrows we've established. And the great thing about these lines is they're also helping us to establish uh, our perspective. So maybe there is a, a road that comes over here. And our character is right here. And maybe they are holding out a, uh, a sword or something. They're kind of ready action. This is not going to be a, uh, a masterpiece, by the way. <laughs> Disclaimer here. Um, and then let's say there's uh, so this is kind of a high up closer area. Let's say there's this road sort of continues down below. and leads us to focal point number two. And I'm gonna use some arrows from the, uh, the side of the painting here just to sort of reinforce that landscape. And I uh, can't remember if we, we can just have this be a, an interesting rock. You don't have to have three focal points. You can even just have a direct 
uh, relationship between you know your character and your main focal point. It's usually the simplest and easiest way to go, but I've just included a third one here uh, in case you want to get a bit more complex with things or you want to establish a few different uh, key elements in your painting. So from there, this road is coming out this way. I have a uh, horizon line here. See how it's following this blue line that I set up earlier? And maybe some mountains coming in from the corner. And uh, let's also think about some clouds we can set up that are following this blue line over here. And some other ones we can set up that are coming in this direction. Again, this is all already following perspective lines as well. So, you know, you can use perspective to your advantage to create this flow as well. And now let's create our citadel, our fortress, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. Let's try that again. All right, good enough. Um, now, the viewer's line of sight is connecting to this rock, or maybe, uh, actually, maybe it would be better as if they're faced, uh, facing forward. Maybe they have just a straightforward stance and they're looking up this way. It's probably not the best angle to set up here, but you know, it's just an example. Um, and this vertical line of the citadel is also sort of creating this relationship between the character and that as well. We could think about other ways we can lead the eye over there, maybe some other uh, curves in the landscape, something like that. And let's see what this looks like without our messy layer underneath. So we can see here how the viewer's eye can come in at uh, any point in this canvas follow these paths around and stay within the composition. Okay, now let's take a look at a real example of how I've used this in a painting. So let's look at this piece I made for a live stream a little while back. And let's talk a little bit about how I used those same strategies in this piece to keep the viewer's attention here and to keep the eye circulating around the piece. By the way, you can check out the full walkthrough of this piece in uh, my the three-part live stream series that I've included here on my channel. And you can find a lot of these brushes as well in the description below the video. So let's bring out our builder brush again, get it nice and bold. Let's think about how we've created pathways of flow within this piece. So if you'll notice, Look at the strokes I'm using over here in the corner. All of these are creating lines leading in this direction. They're also moving from an area of low contrast and low saturation to an area of higher contrast and higher saturation. That's basically taking care of this corner here. Up here, we also have an area of, of low contrast and low interest right here. And we have this pathway that's sort of bringing us up around this side of the canvas. Essentially, if the eye ever wanders up here, it's catching it, diverting it over, and bringing it to these other areas of focus. And so this right here could be our secondary focal point. This is our primary focal point. Oops, that's a two. And uh, these are both areas of high contrast. This one is a high area of relative high contrast. So because it's a distant object, it's not actually as high contrast as this area here, but relative to its environment and with the atmospheric perspective in consideration, it is another area of high contrast. So we basically want to keep the viewer's eye circulating around these two areas. So we have a very literal pathway going from this character's head along the spine of the creature over to its face. We have the spear, which is creating a direct 
line of sight to the creature and we have the eyes of the character <laughs> uh, making a direct line of sight to the creature as well. We also have uh, points of flow coming in from this low contrast area over here along various tree branches along the path of the light leading to this high, high contrast area right here. It could even be argued that, that this is actually the real uh, point of focus on this character just because the, the light is really uh, popping off right there. And we also have um, these tree roots leading us in here. This path is uh, another useful tool uh, you can use in any piece to create a literal uh, pathway from one point of the canvas to the other. So this is a sort of low contrast, uninteresting area, or at the very least, possibly a uh, what I might call like an entrance point into your painting. So if they're coming in from this direction, they're going to put themselves right here because this is the closest to where the viewer is looking from. So they kind of uh, position themselves from this corner naturally, almost like we're, we're standing at the top of these steps looking down. So from there, we can follow this pathway. We have some high contrast here, which can divert attention up to this figure, or we can follow the pathway all the way down straight to this focal point. Notice the uh, lines in the rock over here are also serving a purpose to bring attention in from this area up here. And there's this nice uh, curve along here, which helps to circulate things from within. So uh, let's choose a different color here and really just highlight the main path that we want our viewer to uh, follow once they're in the painting basically want them to arrive here and here and just continue to follow the dynamics between these two areas. Notice there's nothing on the outside with the exception of possibly this area here that could draw attention away or maybe perhaps over here, uh, but they're pretty low risk, especially because this part is sort of serving as another buffer in case the eye wanders over here. It sort of captures the eye, brings it around, and back into circulation here. Okay, so I hope that's been uh, helpful for you, and uh, I hope you've learned a little bit about how you can use flow in your own piece to keep the viewer's attention and keep their eye moving around and really capture their interest right away. So if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe below, like the video and hit the bell so you can see more content I release every Wednesday. And also uh, feel free to join me uh, during any one of these live streams. I do that every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you hit that bell, you'll receive a notification about when that's happening. So until next time, guys, take care.